Hello, hello, welcome back. And today we're talking about mannerisms to make men fall for you. And I will be talking about this from my personal experience and giving you some killer examples at the end. So make sure you stay till the end. And yeah, this is for all of us to show you that you don't need to be like someone who looks like super amazing or like a supermodel or have a face full of makeup or anything. Like you can just be your natural self and still get results. <laughs> so if you're into that, then yeah, let's get into it. But first I'll just say my name is Amanda and here we talk everything about femininity and becoming the best version of ourselves so that we can become our own dream girl and live our own dream life. So let's get into it. I'll be looking down a lot because I made a ton of notes so that I don't forget anything. And yeah, I hope you guys don't mind too much. <laughs> so, in the presence of a masculine man, you naturally become more feminine. I'll just preface everything with that. You just automatically become more feminine. But, there's a big but here, if you haven't been in your feminine for a while and you've forgotten what it's like, then you will need to practice it because it won't be coming naturally to you. So you'll need to practice in the mirror and like with random people so that it becomes natural. And it will feel silly sitting in front of the mirror and noticing like, oh, that does not look so good. Or, oh, I thought I was coming across way better when really, man, I do not like that face. You know, it'll be a little bit uncomfortable, but that is how you'll get results like really fast. And it'll help you become more natural. And you'll get more confidence because you'll know what you're like in public and how people are receiving you. And that really helped me instead of just guessing like, oh, well, I hope I look okay and I hope this looks good. You know, it, it takes the guesswork out. So like, for example, when I'm saying that in the presence of a masculine man, you'll naturally become more feminine. Like, let's say, for example, he's straight on to you like I am to you guys, right? Because I'm more in my masculine because I'm teaching, right? And if he's straight into you and standing there or looking at you, his energy is coming towards you, his gaze, his attention, that masculinity will make you drop into your feminine. You will become more soft. You'll drop into your curves. Like you might drop in one hip and be more, at, more of like at an angle to him and like with your face, you know, to the side, looking up at him. You know, instead of you being two dogs, like straight onto each other, like in combat style, one of you guys will take opposite poles. He will be that way, you know, his attention coming towards you. And you'll just kind of be more, you know, snaky on the side, okay? And don't do any of this like consciously, like practice this in private, if you're not used to it or you've forgotten it, because we innately know inside how to be this way. Um, but don't be in your head like, okay, there's a guy I need to be like, okay, doing this, I need to be like dropping in one. Like you'll look like you're very much in your head space. You won't look present and in your body and magnetic. And anyways, moving on to point number two. So I noticed, or well, my friend noticed it when I had taken her to lunch that when I'm talking to a man, like even just the waiter, my energy shifts. I become more soft, my tone and voice becomes more soft and feminine, and I get out of my commanding, like, let's get things done voice. You know, I don't use that voice. And I do this because femininity helps you get your way. You know, there's a lot of perks to being a woman. We just forget them when we're trying to be a man all the time. And, you know, people can't resist it. They really can't. Especially because it's so rare these days and everyone's craving it. You know, it's not like the old days where every woman was like this. Like, no. When you're like this, it's, it's an event in itself. <laughs> I'll say it that way. Another tip is be gentle with your touch. You know, whether it's how you fold your hands when you sit, which men notice. I'll say this, like on our most recent trip, which I'll 
do the video on South Africa sometime. I have so much to share, which is probably why I've been procrastinating. But uh, yeah, he had, I didn't notice that he was noticing anything. I mean, he was six or seven years older than I am. So he was like 27. And here I'm thinking, you know, like who's gonna notice, right? I mean, I don't do all these things to be noticeable or, you know, to get a response from anyone, if you know what I mean. It's just like how I am now, because I've practiced these things. And one of the days he just said that he noticed like how I just always fold my hands that way. And it was a night hunt. So we were looking for like night animals. And he looked at me and he said, um, and I should have looked at my notes, but I had my journal and seen exactly what he said. Um, he said, you always like fold your hands that way, don't you? Or you always, you always have your hands that way, don't you? Something like that, except he said it way nicer, okay? And I was like, like what? And I didn't know what he was talking about. And he was like, like you have it now. And I just had like my hands resting like this on my knee, you know, just like on top of each other. And so for pictures or anything, like I just, my hands just naturally go that way. And so after he said that, I had started wondering like, okay, what do I do? Like, how do I put my hands? And then I couldn't remember. I kept on like fussing with my hands. But like two weeks after that, I was like, what do I do? And then I had to look back at pictures and be like, oh, it's just simply just folding my hands on top of each other like this. Like, not a big deal. <laughs> so it's just funny when something becomes so embodied that you don't even realize what you're doing. And that's the best way. Um, so be gentle with your touch. Like, if he's teasing you, like, for example, he was teasing me a lot. Um, and, like, he would come and, like, push me or something. And, like, push it away from you. Uh, let me finish the sentence. Okay. When he's coming and he's just, like, shoving you, like, playfully. Or if he's, like, drawing a mustache on you with a permanent marker, which he got half a side done before I finally, like, caught on and, like, pushed him away. Do it with gentleness, like like contained strength. That's what I like to think, contained strength. So I'm not just like shoving him out of the way, but when I push against his arm or I like went to slap him when he like pushed me, not slap, but like I flung my arm out and I got him. Do it with a gentle force, like you are dainty and breakable, like fragile almost. And that's the energy that I give off, and it helps people be kinder to me, more kind and gentle. Um, it brings out their better side. You know, instead of being super masculine and harsh back, it'll just be combative. And here's a really big one, eye contact. So just do it for fun with random people. Do it with little babies if you are scared of it, because I know in the beginning it is quite terrifying to be doing eye contact, because you're like, okay, well, what if they come up to me or something? But then later you'll just be like, okay, well, what if, what if they come up to me? Like, no big deal, there's lots of people around, right? You're not doing this in parking lots at night by yourself. <laughs> um, do it with random people. Practice eye contact. Practice eye contact with yourself in the mirror and telling yourself nice things. You know, don't wait for your perfect guy to be doing eye contact. Like, don't be like, oh, well, when I meet the guy that I want to be with, then I'll do eye contact. No, you will have no practice and it'll be even more awkward because you're going to be nervous inside wanting to do everything perfectly. So this needs to be embodied beforehand. You know, don't wait for your perfect guy because then the stakes are high and you'll mess up. So just have fun, okay? Eye contact is super easy and super fun. Be playful with it. You know, have a sparkle in your eye. You know, be fun and full of life. You know, being healthy and just happy. That's the prerequisite for any of this, okay? You need to be healthy and happy in and inside and out. And that will show. That glow shows. And it's magnetic and it's radiant and it's vibrant and it's, it's everything. It's the best. So be fun and full of life. And, you know, when you're making eye contact, and then smile as you look away. You know, no one makes eye contact these days, so people notice. 
And another point, be soft. Take care of yourself. Have soft hair. You know, my friend who, when she was doing my hair, she's like, your hair is so soft. And that's a big compliment to me <laughs> that I felt. So take care of your hair. Um, you know, have soft hair, soft skin that is clear, you know, like, like mine, in a sense. It's not the best, but it's getting there. It's like pretty clear for my age anyway. So just eat right and wash your face. And that's all I do. I don't do anything different. Have soft hands. You know, when they handshake you, they will notice how ladylike and soft your hands are. And I know this because they've told me. Men have told me. And that doesn't mean you have a wet noodle handshake of trying to be soft. No, it just means that your hands are soft, so when they touch you, they notice. You know, be firm, but they will notice the softness of your skin. And wear stylish clothing that looks amazing on you. That you feel amazing in. Like, you don't mind being seen. Because if you mind being seen, you're gonna have this, like, covered, like, don't look at me energy. But if you like how you look, you're gonna be going out in the world like the world is your runway. And that's a much better energy. Um, you know, don't wear drab stuff or jeans fabric or that tough masculine type of fabric. Uh, wear soft, silky, feminine fabrics. You know, we are a woman, so why not be different? And it's way more comfortable, I will say. You know, wear soft, silky, feminine fabrics, even if you're outdoors hunting, like we were on this past trip. Like when I was hunting, like I actually did do a hunt, I wore outdoor clothing, like I'm not going out there in a ball gown or something. You know, it was appropriate. But it was feminine. It was graceful. It had a touch of silkiness to it. And it had dainty feminine qualities to it, like ruffles at the sleeves and neckline, a diamond sparkly button at the sleeve. You know, things like that. Another point is wear a shawl. Like you'll see in the Eastern cultures, like um, Indian culture or Middle East, um, you'll see them like wearing a shawl, like over their shoulders or, you know, in different ways. I always did on the trip, especially the mornings and evenings, because it was chilly. And I do this at home too, um, like here in the US. It makes you seem like something that needs to be protected. It gives you this, like, um, I don't know how to explain it, but like this energy of like, I'm precious and I need to be protected. Um, it, and it will bring that out in other people, especially men, if they are there and notice. I mean, if they are like the men that are around these days, like most of the time that are just like completely out of it and are zombies, they will not notice. But Actual men will notice. Um, you know, the shawl will cover you, making you, making them want to see more type thing. It's almost like that in a sense. Like you're hiding in a way, but hiding in a confident way, not, you know, like in a don't see me. No, it's in a confident way. Like what I have is so precious, you would be lucky to see it. That kind of energy. And another point is move slowly, not in a dragging your feet sense, but like when you eat or when you touch your face or when you're fixing your hair. You do it in a... Do it with pleasure. That's the word. Do it with pleasure. Like when you're fixing your outfit, do it slow and do it with pleasure. Like notice what you're feeling, how your movement is. Not being jerky and rough and fast. You know, they notice. Be a woman of pleasure. You know, it's so rare these days, and men are dying of want to see a woman full of pleasure and taking pleasure in life. In the way she dresses, in the way she takes care of herself, the way she eats, the way she enjoys what she's looking at and experiencing. Because that is what gives a man pleasure in life, because they're all just in their head and working and linear and object-focused and goal-oriented, that... The opposite pole of that is someone who they're very much attracted to, who brings them into the feeling part of life. Like when you are able to feel and experience and have pleasure, that is how they are able to have it too. So it's through you. 
And that will make you someone that they don't want to lose in their life. Another point, cultivate inner beauty. It is that humble, sweet, meek, kind spirit that is down to earth. That is what really captivates people. It really does. I mean, there's only so much a beautiful face and a beautiful figure will do if you have a closed off, harsh spirit. You know, there's plenty of beautiful women who do the things I've listed out and can't keep a relationship or find a good guy, right? So this is the secret ingredient. It's character. You need to be a woman of God, a woman of character yourself. This is like the number one most important thing. And don't lower your standards, okay? A man will test you to see if you're low-hanging fruit that is begging for attention from any man that comes your way, or if you're confident and know that you're drop-dead gorgeous and that he has to wait. Like a man will try to hold my hand or come in to kiss me and I will drop my head and turn away. You know, I tell them, you know, gently and kindly that I'm waiting for marriage, like I will only kiss my husband. And they respect that, okay? They do. They respect that you haven't kissed like a bazillion guys or like tens of guys or like every guy that's come your way. And it makes them want to kiss you even more, to be honest. And it makes them serious. It does. But you need to know what your boundaries are before you get into a situation like that. You have to know this before. You can't be making up your mind in the heat of the moment, you know, if you're okay with kissing or not. So write down what your boundaries are for entry of like, what do they need to do for you to allow a kiss or to allow them to hold your hand or to allow a picture to be taken or to allow, you know, like all of those things or intimacy, like have that listed out. Is that marriage for you or is it not? Like be clear and honest with yourself and do it when you have a sane mind. You know, don't wait. You can't wait to be in the heat of the moment to make up your mind, you know, whether you're okay with kissing or not or whatever it is. You know, sit down, you know, take an evening, like this evening, <laughs> sit down and ask God and write down what your barriers to entry are and what is okay for each thing, like when it will be okay for each thing. Like, um, I was at a youth service a year ago and Brother Daniel Andrews said, and it really stuck out to me, that don't wait for a Friday night to decide your values and morals. Do it in the presence of God. And that really stuck to me. So, yeah. So those are the points. And now for the killer examples, right? <laughs> just kidding. No, I'm just going to do them in kind of a way so you know, like, kind of like how to do it or what it looks like. Um, I won't say I'm the best at it, but I just have fun with it. And that's what I want you guys to have fun too, you know? That's what it's all about. Okay. So, mannerisms that men notice. Okay, so you need to be open-hearted and like you're, you're not like closed off, like you're not looking at him and guarded and judging and stuff. You need to have an open heart, a warm, open heart. Like imagine hearts coming out of your heart. And do this with everybody. You know, it's not good to be closed off to anybody really. And when you're looking, Look at them, look down, look up, smile as you look away, and be soft, like have your jaw relaxed. So don't be like clenching it. Because a lot of us, you know, with the work that we do, or especially as women nowadays, we're so masculine, we're working, we're trying to get things done, problem solving, and we get really creased, like right here, like we're just like, you know, like mad, and, and our jaw is tense. And that's how we are all the time. But just relax. Soften up like your water. You know, get fluid. And relax your jaw. So your mouth will be open just a little bit. And it's actually better because I used to have such tight jaws that would make my ears hurt. That I would just be clenching like all the time. 
So this is actually not just to get men's attention, it's just for your own personal health too, okay? So just be relaxed. You know, like that. Just have fun. It's nothing like extraordinary or that special. Or touch yourself lightly. You know, and or. You know, all of these things. Like fix your hair, but do it lightly. You know, touch your neck. Go over it. You can be like, like, you can't see my arms. If they're on the table, you can just be like, you know, moving your hand along. And it feels good too. I mean, don't do that in a seductive, like, overt way. Just do it as, just as it's happening. You know, as women, when you're in your feminine, you will be doing it just a little bit. You know, don't overdo it at all, but just a little bit. And it will bring you back into your body instead of being in your headspace of like, oh, what is he thinking? Am I doing this right? What's happening? You know, it will bring you into your body because you'll be feeling the senses. And another thing, just like, tilt your head and smile. Don't do too much, but just like when you're looking and you like get the eye contact, tilt your head and smile. So practice these things in the mirror till it becomes natural to you because you don't want to be thinking when you're doing it. Like right now I'm thinking and it's coming across a little bit like, okay, she's thinking, is she comfortable with it? You know, because I'm in front of the camera. But when you're just in front of other people and you've practiced it at home, it'll come natural to you. You'll, when they talk to you or do something, you'll just be a little playful with it and be like, really? You know? And yeah, this is all for you guys to have fun, okay? And to live your best life and, and all of that. And if you want to go deeper, then definitely check out my course, Divinely Favored. It's down below, which tells you everything on how to go from insecure and shy, which I completely was all of my life, to being like the person that everybody notices when you walk in a room. And, and every woman deserves to have that feeling. I want every woman to have that feeling. So definitely check that out. And if you also want, I also offer health coaching. If you want to get into your dream body and just be so confident, because the number one thing for confidence is you have to be in a body that you are confident in. And because if you don't have that, you are not going to be walking around with confidence. It is going to be hard. You know, being healthy is number one. So you can get my email by, um, I have a free play sheet listed below that you'll absolutely love. It's all these affirmations that I do myself every day that have brought me to where I am today from being that sh super shy, super shy, insecure, always worried, you know, timid, um, this person that nobody would notice in the corner of the room to like what I am today. Like you have to be feeding positive things into your mind instead of the negative role that's just rolling around in your head, okay? So when you sign up for that free play sheet, you'll get my email and then you can email me if you are interested in this. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.